Hands-on, minds-on learning is the best way to engage our students in learning. Students strive for solutions rather than perfection. They get to do the activities and actually test things out and test their hypothesis and look at the results. Offering integrated STEM pathways in our schools transforms our classrooms into active learning environments. One, two, three, three. They get to see what happens. Not just read about it or listen, but actually see it and do it. I've had parents say, this is why my kid comes to school. <laughs> MBEF has been at the forefront of STEM programs to help students develop important skills and prepare them for 21st century career success. A fin, interesting idea, a fin, kind of like a shark. Where did you get the fin idea? It's not just making pretty things, it's about problem solving. One of the lessons, life lessons, is working with people that aren't your BFF. They have to learn to work well with other people. Studies also show that students who are engaged in hands-on STEM activities show strong gains in science, math, and reading assessments. What is going to be pushing up against your aircraft? What's moving that gives us that, that force of lift? You guys are starting to use all of your glue techniques and your pins. You're starting to create your glider. I think it's more of like putting concepts to practice. So it's like more kids are like, ah, okay. oh, that's why. When those molecules start increasing in their temperature, what's actually happening? Shrink down to the size of the gas particles, what's happening? At a very young age, they instill a sense of curiosity. They come to my classroom curious. They're just thirsty. Okay, so the old adage goes, 10% of the people who go into engineering and technology are females, and I'd like to see that changed. To middle school, I was on a VEX robotics team, and this year I was on an FRC team. It's just been growing and growing, and as I get better at it, I actually enjoy it more because I feel like I know all the functionalities of different things. It's taught me to be patient, to, um, that nothing is going to work first try. So whenever, like, for other classes, when something doesn't work out, like, I just try again until it's right, think of different solutions. It's just persistence. Okay, let's check the motion. Funding STEM is not just impacting our classrooms today, it's impacting our world tomorrow. What they have built or accomplished is a remarkable. When I see their talent, when I see their effort, when I see how happy and they feel pride and they enjoy this class. Teachers letting kids have their own room to explore and play is amazing, but giving me that space to learn and fail on my own so I can learn from my failure is really important, or I found it really important. <laughs> These kids will come away not necessarily going into the engineering or technology fields, but they come away with a better understanding of logic. And we could expand that out into STEAM, include the arts in that. Obviously, you're always looking at building, right? It's always looking at that next step. I think the biggest thing is just hoping that we still have a stream of support and funding that allows us to do what we do. I want to make sure it continues after they leave elementary school. These students are going to be the ones who cure cancer. I can honestly say that I am building future scientists. Measure success is not just what grade you have, but if I cannot work with, the, with other students, then it is, it is no use for the talent. You can see the arc from the beginning of the year to the end. It makes the biggest impact. I measure success as these kids having opportunities to be able to go into a field that they want. To take on the challenges ahead, we must challenge young minds today. It all stems from STEM.